two people decide to get married, it means they've chosen each other to spend the rest of their life together. But then, several years into the marriage, what started out as two people being inseparable now becomes incompatible. My name is Sharon Pope. I am a master life coach and a seven-time best-selling author on love and relationships. I help women who are struggling in their lonely and disconnected marriages get the confidence and clarity they need to either fix the struggles in their marriage or lovingly release it without regret. You can go to clarityformymarriage.com to explore if there's a fit for you and I to work together today. We are talking today about the disconnected marriage and I talk about the disconnected marriage a lot because I think it is the most universally descriptive way to describe what's happening when a marriage is struggling. You know, sometimes I'll hear more descriptive words like empty or lonely, living like roommates, or I love him but I'm not in love with him. I might also hear a, I'm in a loveless marriage or I'm in a sexless marriage. Those are also common phrases, but disconnected marriage, I think is universally applicable when a marriage is struggling because when you're connected as a couple, the marriage isn't really struggling. Even though you might have hardships, life is gonna throw you things, but the marriage itself isn't struggling. And so today, what I wanna be able to address is what is a disconnected marriage? How do we get there? And is change possible? All right, so first I wanna start off with just a quick story about a client of mine. I'm gonna to refer to her as Renee, even though that is not her real name to protect her anonymity. Um, but honestly, this story could be almost any one of my clients. While some of the details may differ, the feelings behind them and how we got here are very much the same. So when Renee and her husband got married, you know, she was a high-powered, type A, smart, driven corporate executive. And she was super successful in her career. Her husband was a journalist and also a part-time professor at a local university. And so they were both smart, driven people. And one of the things that helped them connect was the passion that they had for each of the, the work that they did in the world. Now, they had been married about 15 years at the time that I had begun working with Renee. And at this point, they had two kids. And when I started to ask her, when do you think things started to get disconnected between you and your spouse? She told me about how several years ago, he had lost his job as a journalist. And while he taught a little bit for a little while, eventually that trailed off as well. He was home more. He was taking on more of the responsibility in terms of the kids and what they needed. And he took up sailing. And so... He kept himself busy between the kids in the home and sailing. And she just kept driving and driving in her corporate career. Now, they made some of those decisions very consciously, but the problem was is that now their lives had gone in such different directions that there weren't a lot of connection points that they had had previously between the two of them. Outside of now, the only point of connection became what's going on with the kids, where do the kids need to be, what do they need, what do we need to do around the house. It was all around logistics and kids. And that, my friends, is a warning sign that you're headed into sort of a danger zone when you don't have anything else to really talk about between the two of you besides the weather, kids, and logistics of your life, right? So... Um, this could ha this happens all the time. Now, it, like I said, it might look different, right? Your situation might be slightly different. But the reason this happens is because we lose sight of placing our marriages as a priority, especially once we start having kids, right? Because then it becomes all about taking care of the kids. And we assume that marriage isn't broken, so we don't really need to pay attention to it too much. But nothing thrives when you turn your back to it and marriages are no different and so over time that disconnection that's happening it happens so gradually it's like this subtle thing that's happening so gradually that you don't even really notice it and for a while you tell yourself like this is just how it is it's going to be this way because now we have kids or because the kids are at a certain age or because we're so busy or what's going on with my job. We talk ourselves into the fact that or the, the belief that this is all it's ever going to be and that this is completely normal 
that we are so disconnected from our spouse. Now, what happens when you don't pay attention to that disconnection as it's happening and you just sort of talk yourself out of it and say it's normal? The problem is, is that it doesn't magically get better. It just keeps getting further and further and further apart. And what I mean is the two of you get further and further and further apart. And eventually that distance between you and your spouse becomes so apparent, it is palpable. And now it's not gonna be ignored. Now it's not gonna be just pushed aside and said, oh, this is, it's okay for now that we're this disconnected. Now it's like a big deal. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the disconnected marriage. I'm not talking about, oh, we just haven't felt connected for a few weeks. We haven't felt connected for years or even maybe a decade. That to me is a disconnected marriage and it means that the marriage is in trouble. And if we don't pay attention to that struggle right now, we're not gonna be in a better place a few years from now. It's only going to continue to worsen because that disconnect means we're not gonna be as patient with one another. We're not going to be as responsive to one another. We're not gonna give each other more grace or assume the best in our partners, right? Some of the basic things that when you do those basics, that can make a good marriage feel pretty good for a long time. But when a marriage is struggling, we don't show up with those basics. And that means that the resentments get worse and worse over time. And that means that the disconnection between you gets worse and worse over time. So what do we gotta do? We gotta figure out, can we recreate the connection or can we create new points of connection so that we can feel really good in our marriages again? And the place where I see most people fall down on this is that they say, okay, we're disconnected. The goal now is to reconnect, but they reach too far in that reconnection strategy. And the problem is then they're reaching too far. They don't have success. And then they assume that reconnection isn't possible or creating a new connection with my partner just isn't possible. So I guess the only answer then is to leave. And so what I want to tell you is I want you to think about this as what are some of the baby steps that I can do to see if connection can be created either in a new way or recreate a connection that was there at one point. All right, I will see you next week. Has the spark gone out of your relationship? Are you concerned by the growing distance between you and your spouse? While you may feel lonely, you're certainly not alone. 50 to 73% of marriages today suffer from disconnection. I'm exploring exactly why that is and how to know whether your marriage can feel good again in my free on-demand training, Living Like Roommates. We'll dive deep into what's caused the distance in your relationship so you can understand how to move forward in a new direction. Sign up for the training now at livinglikeroommates.com. Again, that's livinglikeroommates.com. I look forward to seeing you there.